Good morning and welcome back to Planet Adult History. Today we are not going to discuss anything, but today I will show you around how is Uzbekistan Samarkand. So you see it's already very hot. The sky is very blue. I'm already sweating a lot. We are currently experiencing like degrees of, whew, I would say, at least 35 degrees and during the day we will shoot probably above 40 degrees. So it's a very, very not so pleasant heat. But yeah, this is very normal here in Samarkand. It usually gets above 30, 40 and already at around this time like 9 a.m. or even at 8 a.m. you can have temperatures well above 30 degrees so it's insane <laughs> I mean if you have no sunglasses no sun cream or sun protection good luck for you you will probably need it because your skin will peel off every other day for sure well Let's see if we can cross the street. Probably we can. It's a little bit... Yeah, people don't like to stop here for the pedestrians. You can hear some sounds everywhere. Ah, well, that's summer count for you. Today I will also show you a few important uh, sites here on summer count. The Registon. I will show you that. I will also show you like a statue of Timur Amur or Tamerlane, which uh, by coincidence will be also something that I will talk about in my next video. And uh, also the mausoleum of uh, Tamerlane or Timur. Yeah, I never get it why people usually call Timur Tamerlane. It's something weird for me. I usually always call him Timur. Uh, well, probably also because of Europa Universalis 4 where you have the Timurid Empire. And yeah, that's basically this year used to be basically the capital of the Timurid Empire. And now I would say it's maybe the cultural capital of Uzbekistan. But not the capital, of course capital of Uzbekistan is Tashkent, where I'm of course not right now. So I will show you also different parts, uh, like a boulevard, I will walk down the boulevard, I will then uh, go and check the statue of Timur, then we'll go to the mausoleum and we'll also see the Registan. Lots of sounds here. Well, they have to work and all. But yeah, I wanted actually to explain to you a bit who this guy is. He's uh, Timur. He ruled over the Timurid Empire. Uh, probably some or most of you who watch my channel, they already know a little bit about the history about Timur or Tamerlane. And uh, he was actually a very bad guy. He killed approximately 5 to 10% of the world population. Uh, he was said to be one of the best generals ever. It was also said that he never lost any battle. But <laughs> with that comes also the point that he was actually massacring and genociding away a lot of people. So. Cities like Baghdad, for instance, they were totally rampaged, sacked down. Uh, almost nobody survived. He also told to his generals and soldiers to behead at least two people. So they should return with like two decapitated heads. And yeah, that's not a very nice thing. And of course, 
eventually the soldiers they ran out of people whom they could decapitate so <laughs> that's also another nice little point to add to this uh, story but yeah that was him over there I think you can can we see him yeah we can yeah, it's a bit difficult with the sunglasses on and sweating so much and also the heat it's a bit unbearable but hey at least we got a beautiful fountain here in the park we got to see a lot of beautiful things now we will head over to the mausoleum the mausoleum right now uh, is being renovated uh, we can also head over to this building over there uh, I actually forgot what the building was, so we can just check the information over there. That's a very convenient thing that we can just read up all the information that exists. So, let's walk over there. And then later we will go to the mausoleum. As you can see, that's the mausoleum of Timur. But not just of him used to be planned and structured as uh, some something else but at the end they decided that uh, Timur he should be having his tomb in there because Timur himself he planned once he died or once he would die he should have his uh, tomb in his uh, city where he came from right so yeah that's another nice look here over Samarkand yeah, these buildings over there they are a little bit more Soviet like I mean you can kind of see the painting or mosaic or whatever you want to call it now we will head over to this building over there and we will also find out what's the meaning behind it what actually is this building if it is a museum or because I kind of forgot what it was even I actually went to this building so let's do this really quickly yeah, and you have souvenir shops and you see they are taking care also of other stuff but yeah let's see what it is yeah, yeah. maybe you get a better view It's a really Islamic architecture. So let's see what it is. Oof. The heat is killing me. Yeah, I think now I know why I forgot what it actually meant or what it was. It's all written in Uzbek. Yeah, I have no idea what it can mean. But yeah, that's the inside. How it looks. So, you're probably asking yourself, who are these two animals? These two animals, these two snow tigers, I think, they are said to be the protectors of Samarkand. Means if you're messing up with Samarkand in one way or another, they will come down and they will protect the city. So, don't ever mess with them. They will be gruesome, they will be violent and they will probably kill you. I will also show you another part. Something that explains a little bit the history over here. It looks a little bit more Soviet. That's why I kind of like it as well. So you see probably the building and this painting. Uh, let's maybe try to get a little bit closer. It's 
So, the bird is also known as the Uzbek Phoenix and it is the national animal of Uzbekistan and it is part of the coat of arms. The women, they have a typical Uzbek traditional clothes and also very important, the cotton. So, the flowers over there, the fruits and everything, well, I was told it should symbolize the cotton, I think. But let's see. Yeah, it should normally symbolize cotton, as you can see, but also other stuff. So you see this white cloudy thing over there, that should uh, be the cotton. So it's an interesting take on how the Soviets wanted to interpret the history of Uzbekistan. Very interesting. So right now we are here in the Registan. The Registan is uh, mainly divided in three buildings. So we have here the older building just in front of us which was built around the 14th century. You can clearly see the style, how it looks. It has some uh, Arabic words written on it and it's also mainly from the uh, Persian style as well. And uh, this building over there you can clearly see that there are like some animals in there. And not just animals, but also like two sons, okay? So this is very unusual because most of the time in Islamic arts one should not like draw animals and also the sons with a human face. So this is very uh, similar to what we can see in South America, for instance. So let's walk a little bit further. Usually there are more people, but I think they will come mostly during the evening when it's more bearable. Right now it's not really bearable. It's starting to get really hot. So yeah, and this building there was built, I think, in the beginning, 15th century. And there's also a very interesting detail we could add, or we can mention. And that's that one of the domes inside was uh, finished uh, not at the same time when the painting inside was finished. So the painting inside, if you're looking at it on your upper side, you will notice that it is mainly like an optical illusion. It seems to go inside, but at the end it is a flat dome. And only then they put the rest of the dome. Very beautiful building. Very interesting history. You can also see that this one is a little bit like... Uh, yeah, not straight. Also, the minaret next to it is not straight, so you can see it's a little bit uh, reaching not straight on the upper side, but it goes a little bit on the left side. And uh, you can actually visit it, you can go inside. Uh, I actually went inside, so I can also show you a video about it. It's very interesting, very beautiful art, very Islamic. Uh, Persian style. Over there you can also recognize some parts of the swastika. Uh, well, just to have another meaning, right? We are not talking of that meaning of those years, of that time. But indeed, very, very beautiful building. Very, very beautiful, as you can see. Me and my buddies we were having a very important discussion and they were also showing me how to play 
a little bit the music instruments <laughs> now but right now we will move back and actually go to the mausoleum we are here close to the little park that is next to the Registon and yeah now we will go to the mausoleum there's also another important thing I would uh, like to add and that's mainly that um, all these buildings or most of them they have been renovated already in the times of the Soviet Union so <laughs> despite the Soviets being you know very irreligious and kind of even atheistic they reconstructed most of the things or at least they attempted to they also prepared the foundation for archaeology here in Uzbekistan uh, and for me well at least the archaeology part that wasn't really a surprise but as for the uh, more Islamic buildings being um, renovated and taken care of by the Soviets that was indeed a big surprise for me, I must admit. So that there is the mausoleum. And the mausoleum in there, you have the tomb of Timur. As you can see, it's even called the Amir Timur mausoleum from the 14th and the 15th century you see that this part is absent and that part as well they were all taken away first it was decided to also make like some type of mosque of it but they decided they preferred to make the mausoleum for Amir Timur Yeah, that's how it looks like.